Welcome back everyone to the eCore Academy eLearning platform today. My name is AJ Raj, back with yet another geometry video for you all. And today's lesson topic is all about the law of sines. So I'm pretty sure that many of you are already familiar with this, but you might be confused a bit. Why is this its own lesson? We already went through the um, sine ratio and the sine function, and of course it's inverse as well. Uh, but today we're actually going to be looking at a different version of the law of sines. And in this case, we're going to use a different method of it in order to apply it to different types of triangles specifically oblique, hint, hint. But before we jump into the meat of today's lesson, please make sure to smash the subscribe button down below, hit that like button on this video, as well as turning on post notifications by clicking that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. And finally, feel free to comment down below. Uh, we really pay attention to all of your comments and all of your feedback as we try and implement them in videos to come. So all four of those things are very greatly appreciated. Uh, so the whole lesson goal and purpose of today is to identify what the law of science is uh, try and clear up any confusion that you might have in correlating it with the sine function. It isn't entirely uh, drastic from the sine function. It's actually derived from the sine function and right triangles. Uh, and it has some history with it uh, back to Greek mythology. Um, sorry, not Greek mythology, Greek ancestry. I apologize. The Greek mathematicians had actually invented this. And now we're just looking at a different version formulated by more modern, uh, modern time uh, mathematicians. And we're going to look at how it can be applied to triangles and other trigonometric functions. So how can it be correlated, intercorrelated with other functions and how exactly it can apply to given triangles. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's look at the development of the law of sine. So all about the law of sines. Sine, cosine, and tangent ratios are only for right triangles as other ratios can be used to find areas of different kinds of triangles. So it's right triangle trigonometry that these tan uh, that these ratios come across. Like sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is your uh, uh, opposite over adjacent. So these are all relative sides to your given acute angle of only right triangles. However, uh, there are other forms of these of these theorems, specifically only for the sine and the cosine. So we have law of sines and law of cosines. I'll be doing my next video on law of cosines, uh, but law of sines is extensively for a different type of triangle, triangles other than right triangles. And it's for something called oblique triangles. So the uh, law of sines and the law of cosines, which I will get into later, uh, applies to oblique triangles, which are triangles that do not include a right angle. And they're considered as improper triangles. The reason being is it's in terms of area. That's where the whole improper term comes from. So you have two classifications. It's a right triangle versus oblique triangle. Oblique triangles are considered improper because they don't have a right tri uh, right angle. You cannot properly develop an area formula without having um, extensive units. Meaning if you have a right triangle, that means one of its side lengths will be its height. And the right triangle is derived directly from a square or, or um, a rectangle. And that's how you develop the area, one half times base times height. But if it's not a right triangle, you cannot calculate the area without the actual altitude being given separately. That's why it's considered improper not having that given property. And this is an example uh, of a uh, oblique triangle. So I'll write this here. This is an oblique triangle. And it has three acute angles. That's why three acute, three acutes. So if you look here, angle C, A, and B, none of them are right angles. Therefore, it's an oblique triangle. And in order for to calculate its area, just keep in mind, it's this line right here, the uh, height of it. Now, this would be a representative of an actual side length on a right triangle. But we don't have this luxury in correlation with this given triangle as shown. So let's move on. Let's look at applying the law of sines. So let's look at the formula in order to actually apply it to uh, specific, specified problems. So the law of sines is used to calculate missing parts of oblique triangles. As we know, that's the same with right triangles. Excuse me. Um, and with those given right triangles, you're trying to utilize your angles uh, and correlations between your angles to discover uh, missing side lengths. But in this case, we have the luxury of just using our sine function, a sine function that in which we can utilize um, extensive ratios between sides of multiple angles and sides within a given triangle. So triangle ABC with sides A, B, and C, and angles A, B, and C, as shown here, has ratios. Uh, I will write down the ratios right now. And this is going to be the form of the equation. So what it's basically saying is sine 
of angle A over A equals sine of angle B over B, which equals sine of angle C over C. This is the ratio. So what this is basically saying is the sine of each angle over its opposite side length. over its opposite side length is consistent. And this is more of a ratio rather than a formula. But once you start plugging in values and your known values, it's going to be turning into like a, a, an algebraic form of an equation in which you can actually solve. I'll write this here, not the abbreviation, but the full form. So the sine of each angle over its opposite side length is consistent. Meaning for each and every angle given, you're going to be calculating this form, meaning you're going to take sine of angle A over side A, uh, and then that you're, that's going to be the same as sine of B, angle B over side B, sine of angle C over, side, uh, over C, and they're all equivalent. So you can utilize these ratios in order to discover missing values once you're given certain known values. So if, we show, if I show you this, for example, the vertices of a triangle are always going to be capitalized. And remember, an angle is... Um, going to be named by the vertex in which it's existed in. So that means it's going to be angle A, vertex A is going to be angle A, uh, vertex C is going to be angle C, and vertex B is going to be uh, angle B. Now, the side lengths are not necessarily going to be capitalized, and in this case, we're going to keep them lowercase in order to differentiate. So all this is, so I'll write this here. It's actually going to be this value here. So it's going to be A, B, in the, in the case of this um, given diagram here. So it's going to be a side A, side B, and side C. And the given angle, so angle A is always going to be opposite to your side A. That's how we correlate them. So they're always going to be opposite. So And then angle B is always going to be opposite to side B, just as you would refer to in the sine function. So, and that's um, side C. So that's how it's going to work. And that's how the, uh, the uh, given formula is going to work out. And I will show you some examples at the end of this video. So let's look at explaining the given law. So proof. The sine ratio can be provided as formal proof for this law. And with this law, you can solve a triangle, finding all of a triangle's angles. So like I was saying, the sine ratio is what's going to back this up, meaning that you're gonna you're, it's already going to be representing and proving the different correspondence of sides, which develops your whole entire law of science. And um, as I said, side, for example, side A will be op the opposite of angle A and will be accurately represented in the sine function as will side angle B and sine, um, sine, of, sine of angle B and side B and sine of angle C uh, corresponding with side C. So let's look at an example. Look, let's look at an example. So if we're given our A here, uh, let's say we have A here as 40 degrees. We have angle B here, which is going to be... 60 degrees and we're given the length of side a which is going to be three meters now how would we calculate this using the law of sines well we know that we have consistent ratios so we're referring to a and b as separate so that means we don't have to utilize c at all so side c and angle c are going to be out of this picture now what we want to utilize is the ratio in which sine a over sine sine a over side a equals sine b over side b so let's let's write that out so sine a Sine times angle A over A. Let's keep this lowercase. Equals sine B over lowercase b. So we know that sine, um, it's going to be sine times 40 over uh, 3 equals sine times b, sorry, sine times 60, we're going to substitute that in, sine times 60 over x. And how are you going to set up this equation? You're basically just going to cross multiply across, so you get sine over sine times 40 times x equals sine times 60 times 3. Um, and then since you're solving for x, you're going to divide it by 40, or sine of 40 
So it's the uh, final equation is going to be sine. So x equals sine times 60 times 3 over sine times 40. And then again, I've already referred to you how to utilize your calculator. So I strongly encourage you to utilize your calculator and plug that in. There is a little bit of trick, trick with that with your parentheses. Uh, and I will come back to that with the law of cosines and see if you got that right. I'll start off the video uh, seeing if you got that problem correct. So let's move on. Let's look at specific situations part one. Now, this is the main reason why I wanted to separate this lesson. It's quite confusing because what the sine function actually derives from, you're like, Oh my God, it's probably so simple to look at. Well, the equation itself is very simple, but what the actual equation refers to is quite complex. Now, these two uh, circumstances that I'm gonna refer to, they're just shortcuts, but I'm gonna show you something called ambiguous cases, which is a very high level concept, probably something you'll look at in pre-calc and other uh, AP level math courses. So let's look at the utilization of the law of sine. So these are some shortcuts. So you only need two of the ratios with any order of measurements given in order to solve for any missing value. And if you're given two angles and a side in an oblique triangle, you'd find the length of the third angle and then the other two sides. So if you have two angles given in a triangle, um, all you need to do is find the third angle. It's much easier to do it that way rather than the way that I had shown you. Uh, because if you're given two angles, you automatically know the third angle in a triangle. Um, and of course, that's, that's when you have, say for example, you have angle A and angle B, 40 and 60 degrees. That means the angle C must be 80 because remember they add up to 180, 180 degrees. And then after that, you can utilize your given ratios in order to compare to your side lengths. Even if you're given one side length, such as this side length, you, it's much simpler to do it in that manner. Specific situations, part two, utilization of the law of science. Again, we're gonna continue with that. Um, so when, it, when you're given two sides and the non-included angle, find the third angle measure and then the third side length. So two sides in the non-included angle, when that angle is not included, it's not gonna be related in that given equation. So you need to find the third side length. And ambiguous cases are called one, two, and three triangle, uh, one, two, or no triangles. And I'll show you what that means in the next slide. So if we're given this triangle here, yet again, uh, we're given two sides in the non-included angle. So we're given three meters here, and let's say seven meters here. But for example, if we're not given angle B, say for example, we're given angle C here, 70 degrees. Uh, it's saying two sides and the non-included angle. It's saying find the third angle measure and then the third side length, meaning you're gonna be finding this angle measure right here. This angle measure, when it's found, you can correlate it uh, with their given sides as shown, meaning C and A across from each other. So specific situations, part three. Now let's look at the complexity of this lesson called ambiguous cases. This is quite complex. So I'm gonna give you a bit of a brief opener. So don't get too stressed if you're not gonna uh, understand this. You're not gonna really look at this that much in um, geometry. We're gonna look at it way more in algebra two and in pre-calc, but just to get you guys open up to this ambiguous cases. When it comes to the actual sine equation, the sine equation isn't very smooth when it comes to graphically representing it. Remember, sine function is derived from a right triangle. That means it's gonna try and correlate your given oblique triangle with a right triangle. So basically what the ambiguous case is doing is it's showing how the sine function will actually alter, uh, will actually represent an oblique triangle compared to the largest possible right triangle that can be created in that oblique triangle. So just follow along. So when a no triangle exists, this is one of your uh, ambiguous cases. So that means no triangle will actually exist, no right triangle will exist, and it's sometimes possible to form a triangle with given, um, sorry, that should say form, to form triangle with given measurements. So angle A is acute and A is less than H. So what that's basically saying here is saying that angle A, if you're given angle A, uh, and it, if it's less, if it is acute, then that means that your side A is going to be less than your height or the height of the maximum possible right triangle. Therefore, it cannot possibly form a right triangle within the given oblique triangle. Now, if you're looking at your angle A, all it's saying is angle A is gonna be opposite to side A. So that means you can, once you know what angle A is, you know what side is gonna be side A. And all it's saying is if side A, if angle A is acute, 
that means the side A or the um, side that's opposite to it in which you'll utilize the sine function will always be less than your height and therefore you cannot create a right triangle and no triangle exists. Specific situations, part four, ambiguous cases. Let's look at the second ambiguous case, two of three. So that means two possible triangles exist in this case. And it states that sometimes two sides and a non-included angle form two triangles. So that means like angle B equals angle B and angle B plus angle A equals 180 degrees, meaning that it's near, um, it's, uh, near perfect for a right triangle. So in this case, if we're looking over here, it's saying that two sides and a non-included angle. So uh, the non-included angle in this case would be C here. Or let's refer to A as our non-included angle. And we're given sides C and A. If our given non-included angle uh, is represented here, um, and, that, and that's, that being stated that angle B is going to be equal, equivalent to angle B, meaning that angle A opposite to angle B uh, must be uh, adding to 100 degree, 180 degrees, the sine of angle A, plus angle B must be equivalent to 180 degrees. Uh, and once that's done, you can actually develop two different triangles that overlap in order to develop a right triangle. I will get into this later, I'll do a later video on ambiguous cases. I don't wanna confuse you too much. I just wanna get you open to the three ambiguous cases. I just want you guys to know them for now. And for our final case, our final ambiguous case, specific situations part five, we have our one possible triangle and it's when the same postulate produces only one triangle. Um, and all that's saying is that when you're given your, say for example, you're given your given um, side C uh, as shown here, all it's saying that is when side C is calculated under the sine function, the line will not overlap to create another right triangle. Instead, a right triangle is actually existent in, the, in this given, uh, in this given triangle here going straight down the center from A to the bottom vertex, uh, sorry, bottom side, and it will actually just keep it as one. So the side length will act just overlap here. If you look here, A to C, that is your height here. And if you look over here on the side, the side length that says eight, that's actually representative of the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Therefore, it'll be overlapping. And that's when one possible triangle will only exist. All right, everyone. So that'll be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been the eCore Academy eLearning Platform. Please make sure to like and subscribe down below and please hit that um, uh, post notification bell so you don't miss out. Feel free to comment as well. Check out our website at www.ecoreacademy.org. Uh, see what kind of uh, nice content we have there, full unlocked access to what we as an e-learning platform actually offer to you. So we have full unlocked access to integrated note sheets, quizzes, and worksheets that go along with each and every one of our videos organized into separate lessons under their own course studies and under their own subjects. So please check that out. All you have to do is make an account for free. Also check out our email at ecoreacademy at gmail.com. Uh, there you can reach out to us and ask us any questions or if you just want to reach out to us, that's all good. We'll try and respond to you as soon as possible. Also, uh, feel free to leave comments as I said before. Finally, visit our socials in the description box down below at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See what kind of content we have out there and use our mediums to share all of our videos. Once again, everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this has been AJ and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.